Get ready to witness the most epic level up in the history of my accounts. This is going to be the one that pushes me over into the Paragon bracket. We're going to see two new rank fours freshly after completing the Gulk and Thor Ragnarok challenge, the revolution. We got the uh, Grandmaster down for that last little chunk of tier six basic so that we can rank for two new champions. We're gonna use the gem that we got from Act 7. This was about two weeks ago, but there were some more rank ups that happened after it. And we're choosing Spider-Man 2099, very obvious choice for the science gem, in my opinion. And also in SSX, we're kind of reshuffling the battle groups so that uh, strands and myself are no longer in the same battle group so i think this is going to mean i'm going to be taking on a little bit more of the role of the spider-man 2099 player in my war battle group now before this level up i opened a ton of the four star and five star mystic and science crystals because we're going to see two mystics getting ranked right now and two science getting ranked right now I think there's gonna be a total of three new rank threes in this video, and then two rank fours, which is gonna cross the finish line into Paragon. And he's almost all the way up. I just think he's such a powerful character, especially for Alliance War. I do have five star anti-venom at rank 565 so he's partially usable at that rank for a little bit more than just the synergies his duped ability gives him basically a larger health pool which will help if he's ever needed for anything as a sidekick but yeah this guy doesn't proc buffs it's going to be great for the mystic dispersion tactic and he is rank four number two we're gonna go straight in using our generic materials. We've got three of each catalyst. We've got two of the mystics and it's Dr. Doom who's going to right now cross us over that finish line. I gotta say it was pretty cool to see this happen in real time. Milestone completed. We are now Paragon just in time for Eternity of Pain. I can't remember exactly when this level up was but if Eternity of Pain started on May 11th, this was the week of May 4th. It was just before it came out. And it was a very long process to get to this point. And I will probably talk a little bit more about Paragon, about the 10K offer, about Eternity of Pain objectives and things like that in future videos because I certainly do have some opinions on it and it's not all bad. It's mostly to do with communication and timelines on all these things. But I will say it felt pretty good to be very close to 100% on the content now. Act 7 is all the way done. In terms of Karina's, I have one challenge remaining, which is the come out to play one. And since I've recently pulled Null, he's going to be my next rank 3 after this video so that I'm going to be able to tackle that relatively soon as well. So yeah, it's feeling really good to, in my opinion, be caught up. I'm never trying to be the largest account in the game, the most rank fours in the game. But for me, getting Paragon before Eternity of Pain was an extremely important accomplishment that I, I needed to do this. Because if I was locked out of some of the special objectives for Eternity of Pain, that would be a lot of rank four materials that I would be missing out on. And yes, I do understand why they have the Thronebreaker objectives versus the Paragon ones. But being someone that would have been at the very, very top of Thronebreaker, like so close to Paragon, if I missed out on that, I would definitely be pretty salty about it. So getting that Paragon, getting two sort of like undeniably great champions in my profile here, uh, along with Apocalypse, I just think is fantastic. So in the end of this video we're going to start preparing for our fourth rank four but before we do that we have a couple rank threes to have and now these champions are relatively new to my account at the very end of the last featured six star crystal clairvoyant was sort of one of the the misses in the crystal but for a lot of people, it would be a hard miss. For me, it was a big win to pull her two times, get the awakened ability, 
For me, she's a no-brainer rank three. I think she's the second best Mystic in the game. Uh, you can argue Tigra is up there as well, but in my opinion, Claire is more versatile and easier to use. Even though the game says she's two out of five ease to use, um, you know, there's some subtlety when you, you plan how to play her, what strategy you want to do. But at the end of the day, she's very powerful and I've always enjoyed her play style. She was a little bit of a white whale for me. It took me the longest time to finally get her. I even wanted her badly as a five star when she first came out and I grinded for her and missed. So it feels good to finally have a duped rank three clairvoyant. And this is what I'm talking about with all these mystic uh, ISO bricks getting utilized here. Uh, this is why it's very, very important for you to save those dual crystals. If you don't particularly need specific champions or you're going for like featured five stars or something, you can basically target ISO this way. And this one worked out perfectly because I did need the science and the mystic. All right, so we're going to fast forward now to the next thing. I forgot that I needed to sig up Miguel. <laughs> so um, we're gonna, you know, I looked at my, my profile earlier and it said, um, you know, it said something like 14 something prestige. And I was like, huh, I was pretty sure this would kick me over into 15. Um, but then when I, I looked at it again, I realized that he was not fully sigged up and part of my plan was going to be using some of the uh, science stones as well as the, some of the generics because we have a ton of generics. Many of them are going to be in the overflow uh, just to get him up to SIG 200. His awakened ability really does matter, especially with the anti-venom synergy. You start with a wither, you start with incredible combat power rate. The ruptures are going to stay as they burst. It just makes him way more viable of a champion. And especially as a rank four, obviously we want to have the max prestige for that one. Um, so now, now that he is up there, we can take a look at our prestige and we have crested that 15K mark, which is fantastic. That's about average for our Alliance now because we do have some people with more than three rank fours, but in terms of the rank fours that I chose. I'm pretty darn happy with this whole thing. Um, 15057 is our final number and we are in really good shape when it comes to that. So now we have more champs to level up. I wanna get to that spam eventually, but there's only so much I can do in one sitting here, guys, and it's gonna have to be Torch who we pulled from the Act 7 rewards, as well as that spam and that Hyperion. And dude, Human Torch, I don't know how I lasted this long without this guy. I've been using him at rank three now that a couple weeks have passed since this level up. And man, in Battlegrounds, he's, he's an essential Battlegrounds champion because you know you could ban him and then that reserves a spot for someone else or he can basically go into any matchup, even if it's not energy or mystic, you throw on his pre-fight and he's a nuke. He's just a nuke. Like I took champions that, you know, had no business getting taken down by Torch because you don't even need his awakened ability. You just go for it. You just go for it. So when it comes to the materials that we're going to use, we are using the, um, generic materials here we're not going to use our gem to get him up to rank two um, because i do want to try to conserve those one to two gems as best we can um, but as we fast forward through this part we are going to use the two to three generic gem because i do need to kind of save up on some of those resources so uh, we're going to see torch going all the way up and yeah, this is just a great day for the account. Two new rank fours, getting Paragon, finally getting two of the best champs in the game, Clairvoyant, as well as Human Torch, all the way up to rank three, and just feeling really, really good about this whole thing. So you can see in the overflow that we do have a significant amount of SIGs remaining and those are going to come into play. So make sure you watch until the end because we do need to choose some champs to use generic gems on as well as the expiring six star SIG stones. Those do need to be used even though we can't rank for a fourth champion yet. 
But before we do any of that, it's time to rank up Hyperion. He was another one of my lucky pulls that I got from the Nexus Crystals at the end of Act 7. And I think he is becoming a more relevant champion now that he's a little bit more widely available as a six star for sure the five star hyperion even at low sig was a valuable champion for accounts for clearing content occasional alliance war use for me even for years and it was only recently when rank threes became so prevalent that he was starting to fall off but now that he's available to rank up and have as a rank three six star. I think it's pretty incredible. It's a pretty uh, good use of resources. And the best part about his awakened ability is that you get almost all the benefit from SIG one and you truly get almost like every last ounce of the ability from SIG 20 and then from 20 to 200, it scales so poorly that it's just not even worth the stones. Um, so as we fast forward a little bit here, we're going to see that I do use one of my generic gems. Now I have two generics and I have one of the romance gems, which I definitely have some champs that would be able to be used for that one. And then right here at the end, we see I'm considering using uh, cosmic stones, but I'm like, nah, we should save those for Hercules or something. So he's going to just stay at Sig 1 for a while and that's going to be perfectly fine. So final part of the video, I want to start preparing for who's going to be my fourth rank four and it's time to finally use this romance awakening gem and just looking at the pool of champs, the obvious choices are Hercules or Kitty and now whichever one I don't choose, I can eventually use a generic gem on in the future. But because I have 110 signature stones that are going to expire within the next week, I want to start preparing for this rank. They don't need to be SIG 200 today. But we got to decide, is it going to be Hercules or is it going to be Kitty Pride? Who do we want to be our next rank for? Who do we want to sig up? And boom, it's Kitty Pride. And I know some people are going to roll their eyes at me. Some people are going to say, what are you doing? Hercules is the better champion. Kitty is risky to use in war. Are you really going to learn Tigra so you can be a Kitty Tigra player? She's flimsy. I've heard it all, guys. I know the caveats when it comes to this lady. However, I have decided that I want Kitty Pride to be my next rank four. I want to learn how to play her. I want to get better at Tigra. I want to just have fun in this game. And not to say that Hercules isn't one of the most powerful champions in the game. But here's the thing. I have that generic gem. I have sig stones that are available now i have a lot of cosmic ones believe it or not and then you know we're getting like 40 sigs every time there's an eternity of pain event who knows what other content is coming in the future it's not going to be difficult to relatively soon sig 200 hercules and perhaps consider him for rank four or even just an op rank three uh but at this point I really want to look at diversifying my roster and I have Doom, I have Apocalypse already at rank four and those are just powerhouse champions. Those are champions that you can throw on matches that are just generically difficult and they will have ways to defeat. And that's kind of what Hercules does as well. I mean, he does it in a different way. He's a different class, obviously. But here's the thing, like Kitty Pride fills a niche First of all, she's incinerate immune, and I just don't have that many incinerate immune champions. And then also she pairs so well with this team that I recently made a video on. I'm gonna put it in a card. I just call it the team. It's just an amazing team of champions that I really wanna get better at using. And because of that, I am prioritizing her first. So who knows, am I still going to be playing Alliance War in the next year? Maybe not, you know, so that whole caveat about using her in war doesn't really speak to me. And then additionally, I do think that she actually works pretty well in war, especially if she's a rank four. So that's going to do it for this video, guys. Two rank fours, three new rank threes, two awakening gem usages. I think something like 200 sig stones were used as well. And we have about 100 left, 
even more than 100 now that Eternity of Pain has come out and Battlegrounds. So yeah, things are looking pretty good for the account. I have to say I'm pretty happy that Kabam has released lots of ways uh, for free to play players to go ahead and earn rewards within the game. It definitely feels pretty good that it hasn't had to like break the bank account to get to this level, to get to Paragon before Eternity of Pain, and to just have access to so many cool champions, like all these Nexus Crystals, which definitely require a little bit of luck, but they do allow us to target champions just a little bit better than it used to be. So yeah, in terms of where I feel about the game, there's certainly some problems. I'm a little concerned about Alliance War, but overall I am feeling pretty good about how things are. The recent content releases have been absolutely great. I think there's a lot of potential in Battlegrounds as they kind of fix some of the pain points that are currently happening in this beta, uh, which I am pretty confident that they are keeping track of some of the issues with it and when it goes live it'll be a little bit better. And that's going to do it for today. So I hope you enjoyed these ranks and my rationale for why they were ranked up. And I will catch you in the next one.